Mm -hmm. All right, welcome everybody to the fall 2024 solicitations announcement webinar. Please, as you come in, remember to put your questions into the Zoom and they will go into our frequently asked questions addendum and we'll answer them as we, as we get to the end. Okay, now I'm gonna share my screen. This is driving me crazy. Before we started, no crashing. Now crashing. It is the way that it works. Um, let me just open up that screen again. Here we go. All right. Introductions. Hi, my name is Jerica Gomez, and I'm the Multifamily Development Specialist here in Ramsey County. Um, if you are interested and want to learn more about the Emerging and Diverse Developers Program, you can go to our website at www.ramseycounty.us backslash edd. Um, this webinar will be recorded, as I mentioned before some of you came in. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Just make sure that you mark for everyone to be able to see them, and they will be compiled and placed in our Frequently Asked Questions document. If we cannot answer answer them today, um, we will try to get you answers uh, in that document. Max, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Max Holdison. I'm the uh, Deputy Director of Housing Development here at Ramsey County Community and Economic Development. Thanks everyone. Carmel. Hi everyone, uh, Carmel San Juan, she, her pronouns. I am a planning specialist and I help manage the Critical Corridors Program, which it's kind of towards the end of um, this presentation here. So yeah, nice to meet you all. And anyone from NAO in the room who'd like to introduce themselves? Hello, my name is Malika Billingsley. I work with NAO Partners and Jerrica on the EDD program and I can offer some TA for some of these grants. So I'm super excited to hear all the money that we can get for developments. Me too, me too. Some housekeeping. Um, the program background for EDD, this is the second year for the Emerging and Diverse Developers Program. Uh, this is one program with two parts. We um, assist developers who need help building a little bit of capacity to get into uh, the field of development in this year will be doing both commercial and um, and uh, housing development, which is really exciting. Um, this year, a few changes have come down the pipeline, we'll talk, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We'll go through uh, scoring and evaluation for this specific solicitation, and then we'll talk about some other solicitations we have around Ramsey County, CED specifically. The Emerging and Diverse Developers Program. First of all, let's start all the way from the back. What is a solicitation? A solicitation is a funding opportunity. There are documents that make the government's requirements clear so that businesses or individuals such as yourselves can submit competitive applications. Municipalities generally acquire goods and services through this cost-effective, competitive, and competitive and fair process accessible to all businesses. Now, you may have heard of RFQs, RFPs, notice of funding opportunities. These are all 
very close to what a solicitation is. And the reason why we're talking about this, because if you're just getting into the field, you may not know these words and we're gonna be using them over and over throughout this presentation. What is a housing developer? They're entrepreneurs who oversee development and re redevelopment of properties. They plan to control projects from start to finish, from purchasing the land, to building the property, to rehab. There are many points of, there are many points of entry to this industry. So that doesn't mean that you have to have a master's degree in housing development, or you have to be a realtor, or you have to be a teacher. You don't have to be anything to be a developer. So I just wanna clear that up. And Ramsey County specifically defines emerging developers as an individual or entity that has owned or developed no more than 25 housing units or 15,000 square feet of commercial space. Remember how we said there were a couple of changes this year, and that is one of them. Um, so 25 units of housing um, as opposed to properties. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to place them in the chat. And if you qualify under that definition, then you are a housing developer, even if you haven't developed your first housing. I want to just take away any stereotype type threat that you might be feeling as you come into this room. Um, this presentation is for you. Solicitation announcement. So specifically for the EDD program, uh, the applicants will have to have 25 housing units or less. That's for both the solicitation and the technical assistance that is um, that is offered this year underneath NAO. Um, and you can find that on our website. Uh, people who are applying for commercial development would apply underneath our commercial solicitations, but you are still welcome to apply using EDD um, EDD technical assistance because that is available to you this year. Housing development that serves low to moderate income residents is going to be is what we're going to be funding underneath the EDD program solicitation, and that's going to be awarded with a deferrable zero percent interest loan, and it's going to come with twenty years of affordability, and it's eligible in both St. Paul and suburban Ramsey County. And the application period started last week, September 5th, and will be open until October 31st, or we'll be accepting responses until October 31st. Um, and then our recommended awards will go to board in December 2024. What are some of the goals of EDD? So the Emerging and Diverse Developers Program was built to accomplish a lot of Ramsey County's strategies as well as our ECI plans, so our Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan. And if you haven't read this plan, I really suggest that you do because it's such an amazing opportunity to learn about what the community has said that they want from Ramsey County and what we're doing through the EDD program. The Equitable Development Framework is something that really teaches us how, so basically we're giving you this opportunity to read these plans so that you can understand what it is that Ramsey County is looking for to do for the constituents so that while you're developing your plan, while you're, while you're reading it, you can have things that resonate with you and pull them out and put them in some of your responses. Because if you tell me exactly what I told you that I want it, that you can do that for me um, as, you're score, as we're scoring the applications, that's what we're gonna be looking for. Now, I told you that we accomplished a lot of Ramsey County strategies and goals with the Emerging and Diverse Developers Program, and I was not lying to you. Two county goals are to cultivate economic prosperity and invest in neighborhoods with concentrated financial poverty, and to enhance access to opportunity and mobility for all residents and businesses. As you can see, we have covered so many of these goals with the EDD program, so it is no small feat. Um, I wanna thank my partners in this work, NAO Partners, um, because we were able to accomplish so much by doing the EDD program. Last year, we invested $3.1 million back into the community, and we've got several housing units coming online right now um, for, from the EDD program for last year, which is just really exciting. Housing is getting built. Um, developers are getting into the field and becoming successful through housing development, which is really, really just, I mean, I get to do my dream job. So I'm really happy about this. 
Next slide. Eligible activities underneath the EDD program. So the EDD program solicitation allows you to build new construction, rehab, naturally occurring affordable housing, assist in acquisition with some form of site control. I hate to say assist in acquisition because you will not get searching money. So like if you're looking for a property, you will not get searching money. Um, that's not a part of uh, the EDD program. Instead, we award in the the parcel or the 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 address that you apply with, and so if you were to, for instance, be purchasing five twenty nine Arundel, and you were to get an award for five twenty nine Arundel, and five twenty nine Arundel fell through then that award would no longer be yours because we award towards the parcel. So when I say acquisition, I don't want you to feel like this is searching money. This is instead specific parcel um, applications. So I hope that makes sense. And then with site ownership, so say you already own the site, we can uh, award uh, pre-development funding. This is a very, very competitive process. So the application, um, pieces really do matter. Last year, we got 29 applications and we were able to award 11. So <clears throat> this is a very competitive process, but these are the eligible activities underneath the EDD program. So pre-development funding is such a huge opportunity for Ramsey County. And if you own, you have full site ownership, that means that you have an executed purchase agreement. That means that your name is on the deed. So the reason why site ownership is so important is because it is attached to the lien of the parcel that you are applying with. Um, and this could cover things like your architectural fees, your engineering fees, your consulting fees, your environmental assessments, legal consultant, marketing, market analysis, administrative costs for loan commitments, zone approvals, and land application fees, and then permanent fees. These are really amazing funds because um, as you all know, who are in development or who have been in this field for a while, pre-development costs are not easy to come by. This $20,000 grant, well, this $20,000 loan will turn into a grant um, as long as you get the as long as you do what you said you were going to do. So um, the loan will be attached to the lien of your property, but if you do create the housing that you said that you were going to create, it will be forgiven as a grant. All right, so we are currently in our open application period. This is a eight week period between September 5th and October 31st. In this point, we are accepting applications. So you can go into our Zoom grants profile and find the EDD program solicitation. In November, we will review those applications as a staff, as an interdisciplinary staff um, for four criteria, which we'll talk about in just a second. Applicants will be notified in December if they were awarded or not. The recommended uh, projects will go to the board in the third week of December and closing conversations can begin as early as January, as long as you have all of your, all of your things down. The reason why I'm telling you this now is because as you're looking for your properties, as you're um, getting to the, the conversations with your banks, with your financial institutions for the rest of the money that you're looking for for these projects, I want you to be aware of what that timeline looks like as we as we move forward into you know, giving awards and closing so that you can inform everybody, all of the stakeholders on your project as to what's going on um, at Ramsey County at the time that you're, you're, uh, you're, you're asking for status reports. Generally after applications are received, we do not take, um, we don't take any extra documentation. We don't uh, really communicate very much between um, uh, potential awardees in and uh, Ramsey County only because there, there are there are conflict of interest rules for this. Um, but we may reach out to you in the meantime to ask you questions about your project to help us better understand uh, what it is that you're proposing. Scoring and evaluation. We believe that it's very important that scoring is transparent. Um, so we give you four criteria in which I'll talk about in just a moment um, to focus on as you're developing your applications, because 
we want you to know this is exactly what we're looking for um, so that you can self-score before you even submit your application to you know, understand the competitiveness of this program. Our scoring criteria are strategic alignment, affordability, financial feasibility, and organizational capacity. If you look at our strategic alignment portion, that's that nice big blue portion, it's a little bit larger in this specific solicitation. If you've applied for other solicitations, you may be like, whoa, 40 points. That's a huge amount. And the reason why we increased it so substantially with the EDD program is because we realized prior to EDD, we had emerging developers who would apply into our solicitations. And those emerging developers uh, really understood what the community wanted. Uh, and that's what strategic alignment is all about. They knew exactly what it was that we were asking for to be provided because many of them were members of the community. And so to incentivize the, we're not trying to teach fish how to fly or we're not trying to teach birds how to swim, unless you're a duck. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Minnesota joke. Um, <laughs> uh, to incentivize that, we increase the level of points awarded for the EDD program to 40 as opposed to 25. And the organizational capacity down to 10 points because we understand that you're just starting, just building your team. And that makes it so our quantitative and qualitative analysis is exactly 50-50. So the quality of your application, the quality of your project is just as important as the quantitative analysis. And we plan to help you um, with both. So this is very exciting for Ramsey County. And it's also very exciting for emerging developers as they're coming into this field. Please remember if you have questions to put them in the chat and we will make sure to get to them by the end of today if we can, otherwise they will go into our frequently asked questions document. Now I, I, I beat the drum of strategic alignment and there's a really good reason for that. It's because Ramsey County has the frameworks. We have the strategies, we have the goals, and I wanna make it so that when we're providing projects, when we're awarding projects, we're awarding um, what it is that we ask people to do. So applicants who score the highest in strategic alignment will fully respond to all of my attachment A questions. The attachment A is our livability questionnaire. And the reason why this is so important is because this is how we determine that 40 points. So if you don't turn in, a livability questionnaire. First of all, it's a pass-fail document. <clears throat> Second of all, 40 points. I don't know very many people who could miss 40 points on a test and still pass that test. Um, so I want you to take it very seriously. And I want you to give me $500,000 questions. I mean, answers to my questions. Um, Applicant fully responds to attachment A, demonstrates a clear link between the project and the economic competitiveness and inclusion should plan the equity development framework and deeply affordable housing initiative report. All of these uh, links will be posted in this presentation as it's on our website. Um, so you will have access to all of these documents as well as they are attached to our website already, but I put them all in one place just for you guys to be able to read. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the other ones because imagine if a full answer does all of this and gives you 40 points, then if you don't give me a full answer, you will get less points. And just thinking about, you know, missing 10 points because you weren't able to connect your your uh, project to the equitable, equitable development framework, say that three times fast, um, and, or the deeply affordable housing initiative report, um, it just doesn't seem worth it. So I would read and understand these reports as your uh, applying and understanding, you know, what it is that Ramsey County is looking for. Now for affordability, we do allow for a mix of affordability um, and your mix doesn't have to be, your mix has to be under 80%. But it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to include 30% AMI, it doesn't have to include 50% um, AMI, but it should between be between 30 and 80% AMI, otherwise it will not be um, competitive in this process and it won't score for affordability. And like I said, missing 25 points is a substantial amount of points to miss. 
As you look at this uh, affordability slide, you can see on the right, I've given you an example of what a mix of affordability looks like. Here we have a four unit building with 150% AMI, 130% AMI, actually 250% AMI. Why did I separate them? I just wanted to confuse myself. 250% AMI, a 30% AMI, and an 80% AMI. Now this building qualifies as 52.5 AMI. 52.5 AMI is not trackable, okay? So because it's over 50% AMI and under 60% AMI, we would track this for 60% AMI for the, for the building. This is what's called income averaging. It allows you to have a mix of incomes um, for your affordable housing, and it really does provide a basis of support um, for uh, diversity in area median income within your project. This is quantitative. So quantitative analysis is all about the numbers. There is no ambiguity there. If your project's mix averages 50% AMI or less, then you'll score 20 points. If your project unit mix averages to 60% AMI or less, you'll score 15 points. If you have deeper affordability, you could score five additional points. And so the maximum point here is 25. We'll be looking across the spectrum at your total development costs, your number of units, your cost per unit, your amount requested, your amount per unit requested, and the percentage of Ramsey County subsidy um, as compared to other sources in your multifamily workbook, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Percentage of other funding and a letter of support from municipality could create a more competitive application on your behalf. Financial feasibility will be all about the cost of that unit. So if your so affordability and financial feasibility are both quantitative, but they are different. Affordability is how much our constituents pay. Financial feasibility is how much we'll have to give you um, compared to other applications across the board. So if your unit is less than $200,000, um, and that's per unit. So say you had a 20 unit building and each unit you were rehabbing costs about $180,000. You could score 20 points in the financial feasibility category. Um, I don't want you to fight to make your prices this much if this is, if you're doing new developments, it's almost impossible to get a unit for 200 point or for 20, for $200,000 as a new development. What this is about is understanding that you may not score high in every single category, but so that you can you can kind of self-score and add your scores up as you're you know developing your application. So um, think about if you don't score high in the financial feasibility category or the affordability category, you know, how you're going to score as you're going into strategic alignment, how you're going to score as you're going into organizational capacity. This way you can conceptualize what it is that you're, you're providing as you're doing these applications, which often take 30 hours to complete. So they are very, very long applications. I just want to make sure that people know as they're going into them, what it is that we're looking for. Organizational capacity. We do provide an organizational capacity worksheet um, and it's gonna give you just kind of a template to follow as to what we're looking for for your organizational capacity. This is 10 points on your application. So um, think about your team, think about your architect, think about your, uh, your GC, your general contractor. I'm sorry, I've tried not to use these acronyms, but they just come out of me. Think about the financial institution in which you're using. Um, think about your civil engineer, if you have one on your team. Think about all of the little pieces that go into all of the, the people that go into the development of your application, because, you know, we get further when we go together. And this is 10 points towards your application. So if you don't have a full team yet, just know that, um, you know, this is what we're looking for. All right, now that we're 30 minutes into the meeting, 
Let's go over some of the required documents for the EDD program. These are what we consider in Ramsey County our pass-fail requirements. This is how you get to the scoring table. So we talked about eligible housing type earlier. That was the new development, um, the uh, rehab, the acquisition, the pre-development. So those are your eligible uses, right? So if you have an eligible housing type that you're providing. Your multifamily workbook, that's the quantitative analysis document that is um, generally created through Excel. We use the Minnesota Multifamily Workbook. Um, and there is one attached in our Zoom grants, and we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, this could be also called a pro forma. This has all of your 15-year projections inside of it. It'll have all of your unit costs inside of it. It'll have all of your sources and uses. This document is very, very helpful in required as you come into the solicitation. So you wanna make sure that you understand the multifamily workbook. And if you do need assistance, if you are looking at this document and you feel cross-eyed because it is a lot of information, please make sure you go to our website, www.ramseycounty.us um, and scroll down to apply for technical assistance um, in order to help you with your application because we do have wonderful technical assistance providers. And because the solicitation is currently open, um, anybody here at Ramsey County is not really an able to answer your project specific qu questions as you answer them. So I just want to reiterate and harp that um, Nail Partners, who provides our technical assistance, is very good and they are very understanding of all of the elements of this application. So if you see the document, I don't want you to get scared and be like, I can't apply it. I don't know what I'm doing. There is technical assistance available. You will also, inside of Zoom Grants, see that there is a section for your project description and those are the questions one through 12. Your project description is required to get to the scoring table. Um, your acknowledgement letter, which is just a letter acknowledging um, that everything that you put in your application is true. Your lobby certificate form and your responses to the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability Questions or Attachment A. So these are the six requirements, six required documents that we have for the Ramsey County Emerging and Diverse Developers Program. And these get you to the scoring table. Now, I'm going to sc scroll over to this next screen. I don't want you to get overwhelmed because remember, these are the six required documents, okay? Now, these 21 additional materials um, are also important, but you want to make sure that you understand many of these documents are already included in some of the things that you've provided. That's your, you're going to, want to give us your project schedule, your organizational capacity worksheet, your market feasibility analysis plan if you have it, applicants financial statements, detailed project budget, explanation of funding sources, commitment letters from other lenders or funders, like say for instance you have a loan from a CDFI that you're going to be applying to this, uh, this project, architectural drawings if you have them, sworn construction cost statement if you have it, bids and specifications if you have them, site improvement plans, project scope of work, photos of project site, evidence of site control, operating expense projections, 15-year performer projections, detailed housing unit breakdown, occupancy field projections, tenant data, zoning, and land use documentation, as well as any resolutions that you have from the local municipality in which you're applying on behalf of. Whew, that's a lot. I do want to tell you that all of these documents go into the scoring conversation, so they are important, but you do not have to have them in order to get to the scoring table. But if you want the most competitive application, you do apply with these documents also. But many of these documents, as I said before, are included in your multifamily workbook. The explanation of funding sources, the detailed project budget, your sources and uses statement, your operating expense projections, your 15 year performer projections, your detailed housing unit breakdown, your occupancy fill projections. Those are all in your workbook and that's 30% of all of the additional information that we asked for. Um, 
and you could take some pictures. So there's even more uh, that you can do for your project in order to really go forward um, and go into the scoring table with giving us a complete application. All right, I'm gonna pass it to Max as he talks to you about our Zoo Grants profile and how we uh, review applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey everyone, I'm gonna show you our um, website landing page on ramseycounty.us. And um, just before this meeting, we had a uh, some text was deleted. So I'll show you where you'll find the Zoom Grants link. It will be there. And then um, I'm gonna put the Zoom Grants link back in the chat um, so that we can all follow along as well. So first, um, let me do that. Okay, so that is the simple URL there. I just put it in the chat. Uh, and I'm gonna start at ramseycounty.us slash edd. So I'm gonna share my screen. And I am going to go to here. Okay. So here we are at ramseycounty.us slash edd. So I'm going to type that in so we can all see the simple URL. And it brings you to this page. It tells you information about our um, about the program, last year's evaluation reports. You can see um, how we've viewed the program in the past. Program eligibility program goals, uh, the cohort that's currently happening. This uh, technical assistance option is completely full. So um, this is just to let you know that this is going on. And then here's the technical assistance um, survey monkey that Malika also put in the chat. So you can press apply now. And um, that's for one-on-one -on -one technical assistance for folks who are specifically intending to apply to either the 2024 emerging developers or one of these other solicitation opportunities. Uh, funding opportunities is where we'll re-add the uh, Zoom grants link. It'll say apply now as well. So I'll have a blue button right there under funding opportunities. And um, this is really important. So it's the solicitation notice. So everything that we went over today and more is in that solicitation notice. And then um, here we are in resources. So this was today's meeting. And at the very end, we'll collapse this so it's a little more user-friendly, but these are all of our awards from the previous years by source. So you can kind of look back and see which projects uh, received previous awards as well. Um, so a lot of resources for you to look over. Um, and then you can see the related resources. So attachment A that Jerica spoke about um, is based off of uh, these plans over here. Um, where it says related resources. So you have those easy links there as well. And so that'll take you to the ECI plan or the Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan, the Deeply Affordable Housing Initiative, and the Equitable Development Framework. So that is our landing page. I'm just going to move my tab down for a second. And I'm going to go to the simple URL for Zoom grants. And this is what it looks like when you don't have an account. This is not logged into anything. Uh, you can see all the information um, on the page here about the solicitation to see if it's something you're interested in applying to. It goes over all the information that's in the solicitation notice. Um, and let's say you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to log in and I am going to do that. I'm going to take a crack at this. You log in in the upper right corner if you already have an account or you can create a uh, new account as well if you do not have a new Zoom Grants account. It's free and it's uh, it's basically just your email and a password. So I'm gonna go into my Gmail one. Let me make sure no one can see my password, okay. And so now I'm logged into a, an existing Zoom Grants account and you can see that um, what it looks like now as well. So it looks basically the same. There'll just be more options towards the end. So here we have general considerations about the um, solicitation. It links back to the ramseycounty.us slash edd page. You can see all of the requirements. So um, what's an eligible housing type, um, eligible soft costs, um, pass fail materials. So what Jerrica went over today, um, and then all the additional materials that we just went over as well. And then it goes over the type of funding available. You do not, as an applicant, do not need to worry about that. We do, we connect um, recommended projects to an eligible source, so you don't need to worry about that, but it's good to know where we're coming from. 
Um, and then you can go into scoring and evaluation. This is all on the Zoom Grants page as well as reminders. It gets very specific about what we're looking for in terms of those scoring criteria that Jerrica went over. And then just some reminders. This is what we call the library. It's called Resources for Solicitation. And these are all downloadable worksheets for you guys to complete your applications. So we have the multifamily workbook. We have attachment A, the equitable development and livability questions that affects your strategic alignment score. Attachment B is the acknowledgements form. Attachment C is the lobbying certification form. And then uh, the additional material, the organizational capacity worksheet that uh, aids in our scoring of your organizational capacity. So now you press apply now. And there should be a bunch of, I'm gonna scroll back through that. And you can see now we have um, places where we can enter in information about our project. So let's say I am going to start a project called, my last name is Holthusen. I'm gonna call my building Holthusen Flats. And I'm going to be requesting $500,000 for the six unit building. Um, and then you can list your organization name. That could be yourself if you're a sole entity, or it could be a, um, a company. Um, and you can go through that. And I'm going to press next. And then it gets into these eligibility determinations. Next will be our 12 questions on the project. And then you have additional places to upload materials. So um, that is Zoom Grants. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just an online application portal. Just wanted to make sure you see that and that you have the um, um, Zoom Grants link in the chat right now. And that will be posted on www.ramseycounty.us slash edd. So everything will be on slash edd. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'll uh, go back to Jerrica. All right, thank you so much for that walkthrough, Max. We appreciate you. Now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Carmel, who's going to walk through some of the other solicitations that Ramsey County will be hosting this fall, or we're actually currently hosting many of them. So I will turn it over to you, Carmel. Thank you, Jerrica. Um, you can go to the next slide. Is, could someone push it to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so just a little bit of background here again. Um, the HRA Housing and Redevelopment Authority Levy, it's a funding source for multiple programs within CED. Um, the other solicitations that I'll be talking about will be uh, critical corridors. Um, Jerrica spoke about EDD already, um, site assessment grants, and then Another program that we offer as well, it's First Home Down Payment Assistance that is also a funding source, um, or that also has the HRA levy as a funding source. And so uh, the first year of HRA levy programs was in 2022, and the eligibility for these programs are limited to the HRA area of operation. That simply means um, anywhere in Ramsey County, with the exception of the city of North St. Paul, and more information can be available uh, at the website there. And next slide. Okay, so the Critical Corridors Development and Infrastructure Solicitation. So this is currently open. Um, it is something that I uh, manage along with Ella Mitchell and the deadline for this. So it's a kind of a quicker deadline um, than the EDD solicitation. Um, it is on Tuesday, October 15th at the end of the day. Um, and so the program website there will show a lot of the useful information that um, you can find about this critical border solicitation. And so the overall purpose of this program is to fund inclusive redevelopment and public infrastructure within critical corridors. Critical corridors, that meaning um, major transit areas, and yes, thank you for sending that, Max. And I'll actually share the map um, that you can use to see if your project is located in a critical corridor. So if you click on the link, um, that leads to a map there that shows all the different corridors within the county. Um, 
And if your project is in kind of the green sections, um, then that is eligible to apply for our critical corridors funding. And so um, we want to make sure um, a little slight difference with EDD in that we are very much a transit oriented development type of program that simply meaning that we want to kind of support efficient land use, uh, kind of that um, compact built form um, supporting density essentially along transit corridors and to enhance connectivity between housing, jobs, retail and services, while also wanting to encourage that walkable environment and be able to use um, other transport transportation besides um, cars. And so um, eligible applicants for these are developers for profit and nonprofit, any government public agencies, and then any related development authorities. And so a maximum funding request that you can have for this program is $500,000. And next slide, please. And so here is a list of the critical quarters eligible activities here. Um, we fund kind of activities that are outside of the building envelope. So essentially kind of extraordinary, extraordinary hard construction costs for housing, um, commercial or mixed use redevelopment projects. So we're not simply focused on housing, but we can also fund um, mixed use commercial projects say that don't have housing at all. And so um, we fund site preparation, public realm improvements or amenities, any stormwater management on the site, geotech soil correction, adaptive reuse of buildings, say converting a um, office type building into housing and things like that, um, building and related structure removal, any demolition, um, deconstruction and clearance costs, and then um, parking removal associated with redeveloping a building because that is kind of a focus that we want to make sure that um, any redevelopment project is trying to um, encourage kind of uh, public transit use as opposed to vehicle use. And so um, we also fund any uh, public site infrastructure improvements. And so um, this could be something like expanding a sidewalk or um, creating a plaza in your project. And so we just wanna also make sure though that um, whatever your project you might be proposing, it's not just improving a single sidewalk or a single street light on your project, but wanting it to be more, um, more comprehensive. And so in this last bullet point, so we fund uh, strategic property acquisition, but this is only if you a, are a local unit of government. So this is the one kind of key difference here uh, with EDD. Um, and so we would only fund to say if you are a city um, applying for uh, property acquisition to for future higher density development, um, then we will allow that. But if you are a private um, or a nonprofit developer, we don't fund um, strategic property acquisition. Um, and that's just not the main funding priority here with our specific program. So yeah, can we move on to the next slide? Oh, thank you. And so um, we just want a kind of quick list of ineligible activities as well. Um, administrative staff time, any building interior renovation. Um, and this is kind of a loose um, loose uh, bullet point here in that um, we do, I guess it, depending on the project specifics, um, we do fund some rehabilitation, but like any, uh, um, any uh, major interior renovation that is not the focus of this project because we, or of this program, I mean, because critical corridors is kind of activating more of the public space. And so any um, kind of the public storefronts or any anything that, um, that is wanting to, not as related to interior renovation. And so we just wanna make sure that that is also um, uh, said here. And of course we also, um, if you'd like to chat more, maybe you have a certain project that you're not too sure could qualify, um, we're happy 
to take pre-application meetings, kind of just to discuss eligibility wise, but not so much um, advising you on what would be the best um, type of application to say. So if that makes sense. And so we just want to make sure um, you're not applying to us and then we find out, oh, you're not quite eligible at all. And so we want to prevent that. Um, and so we invite you to please um, email us and you'll have my email information here in the next slide, I believe, um, to discuss kind of if you have any confusion over these bullet points, because they are a little bit more broad and nuanced, I would say, than um, our EGG solicitation. We would be happy to chat and just make sure that you are eligible to apply or maybe you might not be, but a future project, project might work. And so I'll keep going down the list here. Uh, we are not funding environmental remediation. We have different programs for that that I'll also share. And uh, streetscaping or landscaping, uh, tenant relocation costs and improvements, and any conceptual design services, legal fees, or other soft costs, contingencies, and administration is also ineligible um, to request stream based on four. And so you can go to the next slide. Okay, and so the application timeline here, um, the solicitation opened last uh, Tuesday, September 3rd, and it closes on October 15th, and so that's a six-week, well, more like five-week timeline now, um, considering we're into the second week here. But award decisions are accepted or are will be released in December, and um, activities for this program um, would have to be completed by December 31st of 2026. And so I think I forgot to mention here that um, our program is kind of on a reimbursement basis. So it would be, uh, you'd be able to request up to $500,000 in grant funding. Um, and our, that's kind of our default um, to have our um, awards given as a grant as opposed to a loan. But of course, there's sometimes some projects that where it makes a little bit more financial sense to have as a loan, but we, that can come, of course, um, after awards are given and we can kind of discuss through that. But I also want to um, remind here too, those pre-application meetings are um, really helpful. We can still have those kind of just to discuss eligibility to make sure that you can apply to it and you have an eligible project. And my email right there, criminal.sanwan at ramseycounty.us. And I'll type that here in the chat as well um, as a contact for you for this critical corridors program. So you can go on to the next slide. Okay, and so here are other solicitations now. So we are done speaking about critical corridors and I'm presenting two other environmental solicitations that you can apply for. Uh, we have the Environmental Response Fund or EARTH funding. Um, its application is opening on the 15th, so coming up pretty soon here and closing on November 1st. And so eligible activities for this are um, environmental remediation activities. Um, things like soil cleanup, groundwater cleanup, soil vapor mitigation, um, asbestos abatement, and lead-based paint ab abatement. And you can um, find more information about that at the program website right there down below. And then site assessment grants, that is another um, program that we have as well that accepts rolling applications throughout the year. Um, it doesn't have a deadline. Uh, it's more of just uh, there's a certain amount of um, funding for each year and we kind of um, accept applications until that funding runs out. And so we are still accepting applications. And this one is more for environmental assessment. So it's kind of the pre before cleanup. It's kind of just wanting to investigate um, your project site and um, funding phase one environmental site assessments, phase two uh, limited environmental sampling, um, response action plans, RAP development, and um, some radon testing. And you can also see uh, the program website right there down below. And so just want to share also those two as um, two other solicitations that you can apply into um, for your project. And next slide. And I think that might be it. Uh, oh, well, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to jump in on SAG here. So um, this is a really great opportunity for emerging developers, like Carmel said. It's only eligible for nonprofits and emerging developers. So big developers cannot apply for this. And it's really like the step before you apply for environmental cleanup, right? So you have to learn what's on your site first uh, before to learn if you need anything more. And a lot of lenders um, require a phase one at least, and they may require a phase two. So um, if you already own a site, this is a great opportunity to kind of expand your pre-development funding as well. Thank you, Carmel. Yes, thank you for the clarification, Max. I um, also wanted to share, um, oh, sorry, if you could go back two slides. Um, the site assessment grants, those are, um, we do that in partnership with Minnesota Brownfields, who um, really manages this uh, program um, in partnership with us. And so um, if you go onto that site, you'll be able to see kind of where you're able to start that application. Um, and they have kind of their own document system and that is different from all the Zoom grant applications that we provide. And so um, Environmental Response Fund is also through Zoom grants and then Critical Corridors is also on Zoom grants as well. And you'll see uh, application buttons um, on the specific program websites for that. So yeah. And that's it for me. I don't think I have any more slides here, so. Oh. You have a few for the background of critical corridors. Oh, we can um, we can skip them if you want yeah, to. Yeah, we can skip that. Sorry, I may have not removed that um, at first. Um, and then Max, would you mind going over pre willing wage just quickly? Yeah, so Ramsey County has a prevailing wage ordinance. So anything with construction labor hours with an award over $25,000 will trigger our prevailing wage ordinance. And that basically means that all the people doing construction on a project have to get paid a certain wage. Um, we'll work with whoever is awarded to determine help determine what those wages may be. And this is actually a complaint-based process. So if uh, the county attorney's office receives complaints from workers on your construction site, that will that may open up an investigation and would have to you'd have to show all your payroll and things like that. So or your general contractor might. So um, this is more just to let you know that we do have a prevailing wage ordinance right now. All right, we have made it to the end with three minutes to spare. Um, I'm going to in the slideshow stop sharing. Actually, you know what? Let's go. Back to the top. Just give you something to look at while I'm answering these questions. I'm actually realizing that there were some questions um, shared in the chat um, while I was speaking um, about what I meant by a reimbursement basis. Um, and so uh, I want to also reiterate that Critical Corridors is a grant. Um, and so we have a reimbursement form that you would be filling out. So you would basically be um, paying for these expenses first, and then we will be reimbursing you um, for those expenses. And so um, I just wanted to reiterate that um, it's, we are kind of our default is a grant, but if it makes more sense for it to be a loan, um, where we would kind of, um, kind of not have a reimbursement basis quite, um, then we can also chat about that if you are awarded funding. So I hope that clarifies um, that question there. Max, I don't see very many questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long do you have to submit that form for reimbursement? And I'm typing it. It's just taking me too long to type. How long? Sorry, is your question um, when you need to su submit reimbursements by? So say I'm slow, I can be slow and I've spent the money. How, how long do I have before I can't get the reimbursement anymore? Oh, got it. Okay. Um, uh, so I believe that our timeline is we need to make sure you get that reimbursement, that check sent to you within two weeks, I believe. Um, that will be kind of outlined in your agreement, um, 
that you would be signing with us. And yes, I, I'm pretty sure it's two weeks, but I can also get back to you on that just to double check and kind of read through our agreements again, just to make sure. So. Oh, no. I mean, how long do I have to submit the form to you as the person who's received the oh, grant? Okay. My bad. Okay. Okay. Um, and so uh, you, I guess, as your project progresses, um, you can submit reimbursements whenever that makes the most sense for you. Um, we do we do prefer that we don't just give you like say a hundred dollars for each little thing um, to kind of group reimbursements a bit more. Um, and so you don't necessarily have a timeline of when you need to submit reimbursements by. We kind of, as we take them, we'll kind of review the reimbursements that you're requesting for, and then we'll send that to finance to send you a check. And so, um, we can chat about what makes the most sense for your project um, in terms of reimbursement basis, but oftentimes our grantees do submit monthly reimbursements or quarterly reimbursements, whatever makes the most sense for them and their projects. So I hope that answers. Oh, and also um, reimbursements can be given for projects. Um, after award dates. And so our award dates for this round is in early December. Any activities that happen after that award date, say it's December 3rd, anything that happens December 4th and onward, then you can request reimbursement for that. And so even if we don't have an agreement fully executed yet, um, that will still be eligible for reimbursement and we'll be able to co um, cover that for you. So, yeah. All right, I am open for one question for EDD before we end today because we, it is 11 o'clock. Okay, I must have done really great at presenting because none of you have any questions. Um, if you have anything in the next day or so, please make sure that you send me an email so that I can get attached to the Frequently Asked Questions addendum. Otherwise, I hope everybody has a great day and a great weekend. I look forward to reviewing your applications. Thank you. Thank you. You can stop, stop recording.